What's going on, guys? I'm very happy to announce my brand new course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems. I added the course subtitle, Build Efficient Software by Understanding How the OS Actually Work. And it's really important because by the end of this course, you would have acquired enough knowledge to appreciate how this elegant software is designed and how much stuff it's doing you know so we're gonna learn what is it doing and then we're gonna also learn how it does it and i'll give you my experiences things that i personally ran into and uh, this course is filled with personal stories it's absolutely fascinating, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, let's go th quickly through the things I'll, I'll cover through that. The first section will be, why do we need an OS to begin with? And the short answer is, we don't necessarily need an OS. If you can build something that replaces the basic fundamental of the OS, you can talk to that, direct hardware, and do the scheduling the necessary management of the cpu and the process you can do it but it's a tremendous task and as we go through the sections we're going to learn each component of the cpu of the operating system it's indeed beautifully designed second section we'll talk about the anatomy of the process and what is the difference between a progress program and a process we'll go through we'll walk through a simple execution of a process what is happening here what's a stack what's a heap what's the data section what's the text section and i'll walk you through an actual execution of what happened during all these steps you know reading instructions and this is going to be an overview because that's just the start you know because i'm not going to introduce memory yet i'll talk to you there is this thing that's called memory but oh we'll go to that there is a dedicated section just for about memory which is that that's the next section we'll go through the memory management the anatomy of the memory what exactly happens during a read from memory and a write to a memory what does the c what commands does the cpu do what uh banks i'm hitting what rows what columns are we opening what's the cost you will see this word mentioned all over of course, I am really, I, in, in all my career, my, ba my main focus is efficiency, you know, so cost is very critical to me. So the cost to go to memory is, is highlighted very clearly. And I'll explain to you exactly based on the, you know, what we have, the dynamic RAM. Why is that slow, right? And why is that particularly when i'm reading from memory what really happens and why are we incurring that cost then that slowly of course leads to virtual memory the necessary evil in my opinion virtual memory is such a very important topic in uh, operating system i dedicate this entire lecture to it and it's going to be mentioned all over the course virtual memory is going to be all over because it comes down to the next session, which is the CPU. I'll do it through the CPUs, the cores, you know, the multiple caches we have in the cores, the registers, this memory management unit, because that is the thing that talks to the memory. And because the memory access is slow, for the reasons we're going to talk about in the previous section, then what do we do? We have caches. We have multiple layer of caches. We have multiple cores sharing caches. We have a life cycle of instruction. And we're going to talk about how CPUs became so fast such that even when we do an execution of an instruction, we need to already start fetching the next instructions. We need to keep the CPU busy all the time. Talk about parallelism, pipelining, all of that stuff. Then we're going to de dive deep into the process management. Now we're into the depth of process management. What's a process? 
What does it contain? What's a process control block? What's a thread? What's a thread control block? How is those related? Right? What is context switching? This is the second important thing in operating system. What really happens, really, really, really happens during a context switching? What goes on there? There's so much going on with the context switching. Concurrency, mutexes, semaphores, all that stuff. It's a very rich course. Then I dive into my favorite as a as part back in a database engineer. We gotta talk about the storage management. That whole section just about the storage. Talk about how hard disks are built, how SSDs are built. We talk about the internals of SDs. We talk about what is a page, what is a sector, what is a logical sector, what's a physical sector. And we're gonna we did mention virtual memory, so there is a virtual memory page there. We're gonna talk about how page and block are the most, you know, overloaded things because the next thing. Guess what? File systems. Yeah, yeah. File systems. I have a love-hate relationship with file systems because that's something that was creating on top of the storage, which is an additional layer of management. It's necessary sometimes. Sometimes, I believe, in the case of databases, I don't think we need a file system. And I might convince you, you might not agree with me when we reach there. Right? But file systems does not minimize their beauty, how they are built. How do you manage files? How do you read this? What is the storage is exposed as? We're going to talk about the LBAs, this array of beautiful blogs. Talk about partitions. I'll actually uh, play with partitions. I'll delete partition, create partitions. I told you that partition is nothing but a start of this logical sector and the end of this logical sector. We'll talk about partition alignment, performance stuff, all this stuff. And demo, we'll show that demo, right? And um, I'll end each section by it with, a, with a quiz as well. It's very shady, sorry. It's two question quiz. You don't have to answer them, of course. Socket management, my second favorite. We're a backend engineers, you guys. Backend? We have to talk about sockets and networking because that's the line of defense right before the front end. The front end talks to the back end through sockets. So we need to understand everything there is about socket management and programming. So that's a dedicated section about that. I'll talk about a brief introduction about networking. Got into the sockets, connections, kernel queues. We'll de dive deep into the kernel data structures of, uh, uh, of TCP IP. We'll talk about how, when we send, what happened when we send and receive data, right, through the kernel. The, what's the work that the kernel does? That is so much that you really need to dedicate a core or two just for that, you know, TCP IP management. If you have a massive machine, you really need to give a kernel a core or two because you're gonna see how much work the TCP IP, because we decided the TCP to be built in the kernel, right? That's what we have right currently for efficiency reason. We'll talk about different programming patterns for socket programming. It's so beautiful how much you can how much you can slice and dice this thing. It's amazing, you guys. Right? I'll talk about asynchronous I/O, EPOL, I/O uh, Uring. How is how is it built? How is asynchronous I/O? We'll talk about blocking. Right? Do a demo. And then finally, we'll end this course by talking about different, uh, you know, miscellaneous concepts that I, doesn't really fit in a section. So I created a dedicated section for it. We'll talk about compilers and linkers. How do they actually work? Although they are not part of the OS, their output is definitely consumed by the OS because the program when linked were compiled and linked you get you get a beautiful set of headers on top of that and that's what the kernel reads to order to to actually create a process that's the first lecture right what's the difference between a program and a process and then we're going to talk about what is the difference between kernel mode and user mode? It's a very important question. What's the cost of a system call? What really happens when you switch between user to kernel mode? What is that? When do I need to do that? Well, page faults, that's back to virtual memory, swap, all this stuff. 
you know, we'll talk about, we'll end this course we're talking about virtualization and container, containerization, how those work based on all the fundamentals that we discussed. We'll go back to these concepts that we use daily, containers. How do they actually work? They work on two basic, beautiful concept features that are in the kernel to isolate namespaces and to control. You get only 20% CPU, C groups. If you like this course, head to os.hussainnasser.com for a discount coupon. I hope you check out the course. Hope you enjoy it and see you in the course.